All right, welcome in. Welcome back to the BFR podcast presented by Sports Mockery. My name is Dave. I cover the Bears for sportsmockery.com. You can check out all the work over there at sportsmockery.com, of course. Uh, follow me on all socials at Dave underscore BFR. And of course, I'm uh, as always, I'm joined by my good friend, Ficky. Uh, you follow him on all socials at It's Ficky Baby. Uh, Ficky, man, before we bring Kyle Long onto the show, uh, three-time Pro Bowl, obviously Chicago Bears legend. Um, how are you doing, man? How are you feeling? Pretty good. Pretty good. You know, I, I, the draft is what now like a month away, like which makes it feel like a little bit. I think it's more less, real. less now. Right? Even better, Am I wrong? Right? No, you might yeah. be. I think it was a month sometimes this week, but like it's starting to feel like, oh, wow, this is less mock drafts, even though there's still a shit ton. But like less of that yeah. and more of like, oh, real picks can be happening here soon. So super excited about that. But today, some big news, right? And the NFL uh, owners meeting, there were some changes that came along the way. You know, they voted on some new rules. How are you feeling about the new kickoff rule? Are you are you um, with it? You against it? Yeah. I mean, I'm not I'm not opposed to it. I like it. Um, I think it's gonna keep the game interesting. Uh, before we hop into it though, Ficky, it looks like we have, yeah. have Kyle here already. So I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt, I'm gonna change it up, and we're gonna bring Kyle into the show. Um, let's see here. What's up, you handsome? Hey, Kyle. SOBs. What's up? What's up? How, How are we doing? doing? Happy Good. Tuesday night. Absolutely. I'm hanging How was in your, there, uh, softball man. game? We got a win, dude. Uh, my wife and my two kids came, and they saw me ground out to the pitcher in my first at bat, <laughs> which was, uh, you know, uh, not a very good ending to the first at bat, but we won. I made some good plays at first, and our, our team, we stepped up. We were losing at the beginning, playing against one of these teams that plays in, like, Myrtle Beach in February, and they go to Tampa Bay for a Christmas tournament. You know, some of these softball people are. So uh, we beat them. So it was a good night. Y'all must right. be doing something right, honestly. You, you play off? Sticks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Who, who's all on your team? Anyone we might know? Or Nate just... Collins, former Bear, former Giant, former Jaguar. Yeah. John Phillips, tight end in the NFL. These are a lot of UVA football guys. My older brother, Chris, is on the team. He wasn't there tonight. He's got a business to run. So uh, yeah. we are the green light softball team. Um, yeah. And shout out to everybody listening that subscribed and followed up with green light. You know, it's a family affair over there. So come check us out if you like some stuff that maybe you disagree with one day and one day you might agree with us, then come check it out. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, green light, green light pod is awesome. Uh, it's in rotation for me. First of all, I, Kyle, before we get into anything, how, I, I may have asked you before, but how is it working with your brother? Like on a daily basis, like, does it ever get old? Is it like that sibling? Or it's like, oh, it never uh, gets really old. No, <laughs> it, but in a good or a bad way, I'm saying, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, if you guys have siblings, you know how it can be. And if you oh, have yeah. siblings that did, so, like, we're in the same real estate, me and him. Not only do we play, but now we're in the podcast space. And add to the fact that he's now my boss, uh, at times, you know, a Monday 8 a.m. meeting with him might not go how I want a Monday morning meeting to go, but he is a, a friggin' stud. He's as prepared as anybody. You say it's in your rotation, and you know better than anybody yeah. that Chris is – Really well read and somebody that thinks about his opinions before he speaks, unlike me, which is why we work together well, because he knows what's on my mind because it's in his ears before it can, uh, you know, reach the other part of my brain. It just goes straight out the fucking mouth. So he appreciates that. <laughs> That's awesome. And I think you guys just had Big Cat on, right? Yeah, they had Someone Big else. Cat on there yesterday. I wasn't able to do that because this, those guys, their brains are too big to hang out with uh, a guard. <laughs> <laughs> You're more than just a funny. guard, a Pro Bowl guard, right there. That's, put some respect and a tackle, on Ficky. Okay. Yeah, that's true. That's you know, true. Okay, we had a need, and I switched. All right. Team player, ultimate team player. Yeah. <laughs> so before we hop into it, uh, into like Bears related, Ficky, what's going? I want to kind of address the hip drop tackle, Kyle. Obviously, you had some, you know, bold opinions. Some people liked it. Some people, you know, hated it. You obviously went on. I think the boys podcast talked with them about it, which is really good. So check that out. But, uh, Ficky, you want to kind of relay a little bit into that? Yeah, so obviously we know that the NFL made this major change. If you haven't been on the internet or Twitter and seen, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, either people complaining from either sides. Uh, basically, the hip drop tackle, for people out there that don't know, it, they, they showed reports and data that said, hey, like, it's at least a 25 times more injuries, right? Because you end up falling, putting your weight on the back of the leg and injuring them. So, and it went to the NFL owners committee. It got voted on today. It got passed. 
And your stance was that you're kind of like happy about it because it keeps the game safer. So can you elaborate on that? Why you feel that way? Because I mean, there was a lot of NFL players that voiced their concerns and even prior. And then obviously we saw a lot more today after the decision uh, was made. So I think you got to go backwards, Ficky, to be able to see forwards here with the NFL. And the one thing that's always a constant in our amazing league is change. And when I came into the league, uh, it was, I played with guys that had six weeks of two a days for training camp and they ran inside run period every day and they were full pads and that went away. And people said that everybody was soft. Um, and I don't know if you guys have been watching the league. I don't see any soft guys on the field. I, what I see is nope. the most physically demanding sport, um, team sport in the world. And with some of the most gifted athletes traveling at higher miles per hour than we've ever seen with less body fat than we've ever seen with some of the most advanced schemes uh, that were ever that we've ever seen. So guys are tr guys are catching the ball and uh, they're in space. DBs are put into bad positions and, you know, tough things are happening, tough things are happening, whether it's injuries or guys getting flagged uh, for stuff that we're, we're going to see guys get flagged for this. And there's going to be some arguments at, at some points. And that's part of the rule changes. But I'll go back to the going backwards thing. When I got in the league, there were guys who did those training camps. Shoot, my dad, I feel like if you ask my dad, he was in training camp for four months, you know what I mean? And they went to Mars or something. Um, <laughs> But remember the high-low block where it's a double team? Yeah. You know, you're going to put your hands on the guy across from me so his hands go to you, and then I'm going to just knife him in the legs. And that's how guys used to get the backside of zones blocked. And then they said we can't do high-lows anymore, so just one guy would cut you in, your, in the back of your legs. And then they said, you know, too many guys are getting – so they banned that. And, and, and now as an offensive lineman, you could be of, of the – of the camp where you say, well, we, you know, fuck it. We're just not even going to block these fuckers anymore. I'm not even going to, well, oh, blah, 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 blah. No, you, you adapt, you adapt mm -hmm. new ways to get people blocked. You find new ways to play the game. And if you care about the game that much and you love it, you'll want, you'll do anything to play it. And, and if that means changing a, a technique on a play that happens once a game, then so be it. Uh, I understand that, Defensive backs and linebackers in chase are in a tough spot. Um, and there aren't many options for getting a guy down. But we all know that if you're if you're fulcruming my tib and fib uh, under the weight of your hips, then I'm not made of steel. Well, I have metal in my body as a result of not being made of steel. Uh, and that's what happens to guys' legs. So as an offensive player, we've had to make some compromises. And as a defensive – coming from a lot of these defensive players, I empathize with you. I empathize with you um, because, uh, you know, tough titties. It's it's football. It's it's not ping pong. This shit is really hard. And it, it got a little bit harder for some, some football players. Uh, and that's just the way it is. That's my stance on it. I think it's great because the stars are getting the ball at an astronomical rate. The stars are getting tackled more. Uh, when they're getting tackled, the chances of them getting hip drop tackled go up. The hip drop mm -hmm. tackle is, uh, you know, going towards people getting hurt more, uh, more seriously. So I would say if we can get that out of the game, we keep our stars in the game more, more money for players, more money for the ownership. And that's one side of things. And then the trickle down is guys like you and I, who are making media, making content, covering this great thing called the NFL, we're going to do better as a, as a result of it. So if right. you want, you know, you want kickback society, this is a kickback here. You don't even see it yet. Everybody thinks it's about the, the you know, refs want to cheat and all this. It's like, man, we just want to keep guys healthy. Yeah, I agree, pal. I agree because I think, uh, like you look at it, obviously, like a lot, a big complaint right now, if you look at the uh, NBA, is like players not playing, right? So, in essence, right, people show up and they're like, look, we're here to see LeBron. Why is LeBron sitting out? In yeah. essence, I think it's the same with the NFL. Like, as soon as a quarterback goes down, like Joe Burrow, when he was down, what, earlier in the earlier in the season like as a fan you're like the season's over right there's nothing to live for you know a lot of people aren't coming to the game supporting you know they still get their money but like obviously you're not getting the revenue in that type of way and then obviously the player you know is out of season so if a contract year is coming up there's so many impl impl implications yep. with the money so i agree with you on that the second thing though is like 
the rugby also banned the hip drop tackle like not that long ago, if I remember, and they've adjusted. Yeah. And it seems like they've adjusted pretty well. I agree there's going to be, just like with any change, there's going to be hurdles. The refs are going to, there's going to be some issues where the refs blow a call or there's going to yep. be some nuance in a call on a big play where you're like, well, you know, you remember the catch rule that we still kind of go back and forth? Like, is that a catch? Is it a not? Yeah. So I do understand that that's going to happen. But I think like two or three seasons down the road, we're going to be so accustomed to it. And it's going to be better for the game because all the stars on your team are going to be healthy. At the end of the day, we want this game to be as healthy as possible so that we can see our best players thrive. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's like these rugby guys are ahead of the, their time, and from a technical standpoint, I mean, as a football player, I was taught had a cross on the tackle. You know what I'm saying? Like, if this is the the framework of the guy I'm going to go tackle, I want to get my hat across here. The rugby guys, from my understanding, when I'm watching their tape, is they keep their head on the same side. Uh, you know, they're not going to cross the other guy's head when they're making tackles. Um, and I, this doesn't have to do with the hip drop, but they found a way. They don't wear helmets. Um, they're technically sound. They are tremendous with their grip strength and their tackling. I, I mean, we could take a few pages from the rugby players' books. And th the rule thing, they're not going to change. I heard a DB say, well, quarterbacks can't make these throws to put these guys in position. And it's like, hold the phone. You think that they're going to fucking change the rules so the quarterbacks have to change the way they're going to play? No. Are you kidding me? Like, read the room, idiots. It's an <laughs> offensive league. Swallow the pill, okay? Swallow the pill. That's what we – I mean, we all love defense, but we pay to watch them go downtown Julie Brown. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Kyle, I want to – I guess we can start here. I, I want to kind of – you've talked about it. You've tweeted about it. I'm sure you're probably tired of getting asked about it, but we want your opinion. First of all, did the Bears – did they make the right decision to move on from Justin Fields? I believe so, yes. Not only for the Bears, but for Justin Fields. I think uh, new air, new city, new opportunity. Um, the experience behind him will benefit him greatly. And I mean, you hear a guy like Mike Tomlin speak glowingly about Justin Fields, and Mike Tomlin doesn't say – he doesn't blow smoke. Uh, so – to hear him talk about his talent and, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg. It's exciting stuff for, for people that appreciate Justin Fields and for the bears, you know, if, if we want what I think we want, which is to win the super bowl, um, we're going to need to finish games in the fourth quarter. We're going to need to have an offense that can go tit for tat with teams like the Houston Texans, the Kansas city chiefs. And that's on the other side of the, the conference. Um, if you look within conference, there's plenty of guys, even in division, that can score a lot of points. So you need a guy, in my opinion, who can do everything on the football field. That's what Caleb Williams is. And in regard to the Hollywood stuff, embrace it, bro. <laughs> you need a superstar. You absolutely need a superstar. I played with Pat Mahomes for a year. The motherfucker's a superstar. There's no situation that's too big for him. There's no situation yeah. that he doesn't look at and say, watch this. And I feel like Caleb Williams has a little bit of that in him. You know, when people mention the two guys in the same paragraph, you say, he thinks he's going to be Patrick Mahomes. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you need a guy with the confidence to go slay some dragons because yeah. you look at the route to the Super Bowl last year, you had to go to Baltimore. You had to go to Buffalo. Okay. You go beat the MVP and you go beat a literal giant in Buffalo. Um, that's wild stuff. That takes unique confidence and it takes a team buying in to a superstar, a guy who's almost like, you know, this is weird to say, but these quarterbacks are almost like deities. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're not quite men and they're not quite gods and they're somewhere in between. And I'm hoping maybe, you know, and Justin Fields is it the same way. He's the same way, but we need to see more God, you know, more godly things in terms of, uh, you know, his, his human showed too much. We need a quarterback that just is, I need a superstar. And I think Jalen Johnson will will appreciate having one too yeah Absolutely. his comments were interesting because i you know hollywood stuff that's kind of what you're probably alluding to right there uh, i don't know if you've seen him on on twitter caleb williams like he's hilarious I, i'm hoping he doesn't stop once he gets to the league you know comes to, to chicago doing it. but they, he i mean to. that's what i'm hoping i'm hoping just yeah, the content you, too you can't i want him to be in the cafeteria you know and <laughs> I'm buddies with Mitch, I'm buddies with Cutler, and both of these guys wanted nothing to do with the outside noise, and I get it. That's like that's because we're human, right? Like, yeah. who wants to be beat down every day with opinions and, you know, from people that don't know shit 
quite honestly. And it was it was as frustrating for an offensive lineman to sit there with his guy and to listen to him get bashed or Cutler get bashed uh, every week. And it's part of playing in a big city. But I think Caleb Williams is the guy who's like, turn that shit up. You know what I mean? Like, what are they saying? Oh, really? Gotcha. Watch this. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I want to watch this guy. I you know what I mean? I want the guy who's a public figure. I want the guy who's going to face the noise. And whether it's a tough loss on Sunday night or it's a huge division win on a Monday night, I want that guy to come to the podium and people to say, that's our guy. I think it's also great for Chicago as the city because, as you know, like it's blue collar, you know what I mean, the hands in the dirt type of ordeal. And, you know, this new generation isn't that as much. not saying they're not a hardworking, you know, these individuals, but like, He's given off more of that diva type, which I don't think he's a diva, but I'm saying the pers- what people view him as. And I want someone like Depends that. Depends on like the lens about- with what you're looking at from Fiki. Correct. Because, like, you know, I don't think so. You and I know that these young cats are just a little bit different. Okay? Yeah, it's all right. You know, they're just a little, they're just a little different. You know, yeah. uh, they're not sugar, they're stevia. You know, it's just like they're a different breed. Um, right, right. And in my opinion, Caleb is that. And he's, you know, but he's an East Coast guy that played in Big 12 country. And then he went to the West Coast. And I mean, the other thing that is kind of a Patrick adjacent is he had a, a, a young, bright mind in college that he played under. And the expectations were probably high for Patrick. You know, we didn't watch Patrick all the time. You know, like yeah. I'd be lying if I said I watched the Texas no. Tech games, but they didn't win all their <laughs> games. That will you know, they might have won just over half their games. Um, but you get production. And even in the games where Caleb lost, I know the Notre Dame game was just like, you know, the sky was falling around him. And games like that happen, bro. Um, but the other games, he's swinging that fucking sword, boy. He is swinging that sword the whole game. All the things we love about Justin Fields, the toughness, the charisma, all that. Caleb's got it, dude. I was going to say, uh, Ryan Ryan Poles mentioned that today. I think maybe on Pat McAfee, but or maybe it was one of the interviews at the great uh, interview committee. But he was talking about like the best thing that he loved about Caleb. One of them was that you know he had seen some trials and tribulations, right? So there's a man who come, you know, his, his, he comes out the gate, his what sophomore year rookie or his freshman year at uh, Oklahoma balls out, right. Comes in immediately, throws a dime down the field. Right. And then obviously when his first year at USC, he won the Heisman and this third year, it's like, okay, this guy's done everything possible. And now it's like, well, now he has even worse team. Let's see what he can do. Right. Loses a shit ton of games. Right. Still puts the team on his back, but loses a lot. Right. And I think like you mentioned, this idea of that, like he can't handle the bright lights or like he can't handle these, you know, these trials and tribulations, these hurdles. I'm like, well, this man's gone through it. He's been under the bright lights since what? He's been like the number one viewed as number one prospect since he's like 13. Right. So I think those, those perceptions of him, I don't know where they come from, but I've just always thought like, that doesn't make any sense. This man has been at the, the pinnacle of pinnacles and he's shown up every time, even when things haven't gone his way. Yeah. It's like people, people want to write the next chapter for these guys. And if it's not exactly how they see it, like if he doesn't win a national championship his senior year, it's it's not Disney enough for me. (laughs) It's not Disney enough. Okay. Like Caleb Williams is a great football player. We should be happy that we have an opportunity to pick a number one. And um, yeah, I just think it's, it's as exciting an off season as a Chicago bear player or a fan or a media member. And it's hard to stay neutral, man. I'm excited about these guys and, yeah, you guys, I mean, you understand how important the quarterback position is. Go get the best one you can. Yeah, and then the biggest – one of the biggest, like, takeaways from this is obviously you had the RG3 comments about, you know, maybe pulling at Eli Manning just given the situation or at least the history that, of the Bears. But right now you could say a lot of people are arguing that it's probably one of the best overall landing spots for a number one pick that's a quarterback ever. So, Kyle, have, do you think right now – obviously there's probably a couple more – pieces to add but what are your overall thoughts on the bears and what they've done to kind of obviously set things up for a rookie quarterback likely caleb williams and then do you what are the expectations heading into next year you know for that quarterback uh well the expectation the expectations are obviously for caleb you know if if i were to say what needs to happen for me to be able to just take a breath and be like okay i'm happy with that 
Yeah. Caleb coming in and looking confident, shooting his gun. I mean, I don't care if there's interceptions. There's going to be interceptions. Go take a look at a number of uh, elite quarterbacks first years. And they are literally – it's target practice out there. They're trying to figure out what works. Um, now, with this roster we have currently, it's, uh, you know, if you get in the dance, anything can happen um, type offense. And with the way this defense is built and the head coach, this team has gelled. Uh really well at the end of last season but it's that off season where you're away from one another and coming back and getting together and getting the vibe in that building and i'm not sure when caleb will arrive um i'm not sure if he's set to arrive for rookie minicamp or i did rookie minicamp and then i had to leave i couldn't do otas because of the quarter system and uh, the pac-12 um not that I was in Oregon uh, when I was away from Chicago. I went to L.A. and just trained. Uh, but it was like, these rules are crazy. So I don't know when Caleb's going to be there. But when he gets yeah. there, the guys are going to the guys are going to show up before he does. Um, they're all going to be in there in anticipation of when he arrives. And uh, I just expect it to be a really special day the first time he walks in there and guys get to meet him. Um, and he's, you know, he's eating the chicken and rice right next to, you know, whoever and it's it's the first conversations that they're having like it's it's really i wish i was a it's my fly on the wall green light podcast award winner the hallis hall cafeteria the first day that caleb shows up because that's where that's where everybody breaks bread meets each other um i'm looking forward to it man now obviously we know at the at the top of all of this, making these decisions and getting these weapons is Ryan Poles, right? So you've you've had a couple of GMs, I don't know what, two or three during your time on the Bears, right? Two? Oh, I got drafted by Phil Emery. Mm-hmm. I had Ryan oh, Pace. Oh. Um, and then I had uh Brett Veach. Yes, at three, right? So yeah. you've seen a couple, you've seen a good amount of G- three GMs is actually a, a, a good amount, right? So based off the GMs that you had under while well, you were under the Bears. How do you view Ryan Poles as a GM from the outside or maybe from what you've heard from players and things like that? And how he's uh, I, I loved what he said today. I loved what he said today, bro. Like, finally, somebody who just says it. Like, we're going to go get a fucking quarterback because that's what we need. Like, no, he's pretty much like, no offense, you know? Uh, but we've got to get better here. And I remember when I was in Kansas City, he was in Kansas City. And we would lift in the same weight room. And I didn't realize who he was. I mean, we, you know, we shared pleasantries and he was clearly a former lineman. And, you know, we would chat about that. Or he'd be like, what do you see from 95 or what do you, you know, whatever. Yeah. (laughs) Quiet guy, always had his headphones in. He was going to work right after he finished working out. But he, he saw, he saw firsthand what the quarterback can do to a team. And what putting a guy like Keenan Allen out there can do for a team uh, and for a young quarterback and for somebody who's learning to get in rhythm and play on time and play in cadence, that's what you need. You need a tight end like Cole Komet, who you can throw to in the vertical game or uh, in the flat game, a heady tight end um, who can be, you know, pretty good in the run. And then you want to give yourself as many options to win in zone and man on the outside and that's with dj Moore, keenan allen and whoever else we go after i mean i'd have to ask you guys who are we going to go with at nine i was actually going to ask you that but um i'm hoping they i hope they stick on the offensive side kyle like i know we've invested in the defense the last couple of years you know jaquan brisker kyler gordon um you obviously got Montez sweat i just feel like and it's right paid now, dividends but absolutely yeah. and it could i mean dallas turner is interesting as far as edge you could even Jared go Verst. you know tackle but for me, I'm just like, if any of these top receivers, I'm talking the top three, you know, Adunze, Harrison. Rome, which, Marvin, or Na- Napers, or uh, Neighbors. Yeah. And then um, I think you take one. But what are your thoughts on on that and also Brock Bowers? Like, there's been talk about that potentially with, you know, Shane Waldron and what he likes to do with 12 personnel. Is that – what do you think? Brock Bowers excites me. Um, it excites me a lot. And I think about the successful two tight end offenses – uh, in the National Football League, particularly with a heady quarterback with some arm talent, like you go up to New England and Aaron Hernandez and Gronk, that was a lot of fun to watch. Both guys are different archetypes, and I think Brock Bowers is a guy that can play X, Y, Z, H, or F. And um, 
the coaches love guys like that. Uh, they're all over the field. Travis is able to do a number of things in Kansas City, and it opens the playbook uh, for Andy Reid. And, you know, they get a guy like Noah Gray, who has kind of a, a been a stalwart guy for them, a bright dude. And I think, you know, you bring a guy like, like Brock in, and it opens up the game for Cole Komet. And um, it's just another safety blanket. And I think about Sam Laporta in Detroit and the, yeah. the immediate success that he had Dog. in the National Football. And it's got people going, is he the best tight end in the league? Um, the tight end position so valuable because it's offensive line. It's the receiving game. Yeah. It's all tied in there. So that so, would be big. If you ha- I'm going to put you on the spot here. Who do you think? Where do, where do you think they go? You don't have to pick a player, but do you think they go receiver, or, or what do you think happens? I like Obviously, Joe Alt a lot. Yeah, um, I'm not sure what his availability is going to be, but I love the guy from Washington, the receiver, the most, in, right. in my opinion. Yeah, uh, over like, Harrison. When you look at the cast of characters that he'll be joining, mm. um, there's not two guys on the Avengers who do the same thing. And I'm not saying anybody else does what Marvin Harrison Jr. does, but you're talking about archetypes. You want, yeah. Um, you know, like I think about the receivers in Jacksonville, and they're guys who are kind of playing out of position. Like they're all good, like players, but they're all kind of doing the same thing. Uh, go get right. yourself a guy that does a thing that nobody else does, and that's being bigger and faster and stronger, <laughs> and winning at the point of attack. And that's why I like Roma Dunze a lot at number nine. What a bar, though. We can't let that slide. No two people on the Avengers do the same thing. Like, come on now. You got to have different <laughs> shit, bro. You can't be. Yeah, that's my you. move. It's a Spider-Man meme. But. <laughs> yeah. No, that's fire. So, uh, we, no, uh, going back to the draft as well. I'm a big proponent of, like, the game is one in the trenches. I'm sure you could agree as a former lineman, right? So do you feel that the Bears – trenches are good enough to go ahead and draft a wide receiver like that or do you think as polls who's a former offensive lineman you a former offensive lineman yourself you know how important it is to give your quarterback time and then on the other side to get at the quarterback as quickly as possible so do you would you rather them approach the trenches first and just put a bunch of dogs there or if go you ahead approach and the get trenches someone... go get the best center possible would you do it that early though at nine like a jackson yeah. powers johnson I think I think a move like I mean I'm an O lineman so they're gonna call me crazy regardless I say some crazy shit but <laughs> Creed Humphrey um, the impact that he has on the offensive line in Kansas City and getting all three of those interior guys to be on the same page look I'm not mad at the Braxton Jones situation I'm not mad at Darnell Wright at all Darnell's gonna be whew, he's gonna be a great yeah. player and you can do a lot of things with those tackles but look. You win and you lose on the inside. And by the inside, I mean the literal inside, guards and centers. Um, so you get a guy like that who can get double team starter, front side and back side, who can get guys on the right page. He's a smart guy, a tough guy, uh, and he's going to be the guy. It, there's something to me that's a, that's special about having a center and a quarterback be together, uh, like their relationship. And if they come in together um, and they're both Pac-12 guys, it's cool, you know? Can you elaborate for some of our uh, viewers? Like, why do you believe like it starts on the inside and then out? Can you give like schematic? Best passing that? offenses, bro. Like wh- what I think of just like uh, a great passing off, say the Drew Brees Saints. Uh, you think about the guys they had on their offensive line. And the guys that I remember were Carl Nix and Jari Evans, the guards. It's either you have the best center or you have two really good guards or you've got two tackles and you figure out the rest. So it's like you pick your you pick which recipe you want. But like you keep the the integrity. The inside's important, Ficky, because that's where the quarterback has to step up. Right. A tackle can get beat every play around the edge, but a smart quarterback and a stout guard and center a, a group of guard and center can keep the quarterback safe. And if you've got a guy like Caleb who can step up and out you know step up past the rush and out then watch out yeah and i think that's a great point and i'm glad you broke that down i think we saw what happens when you don't have that great center or great interior with justin fields and the habits it creates right you could see he was afraid to step up and let's be real i would be too because there's a lot of times balls not even getting back to you players getting like the center is getting blown up you can't step up so your eyes wander you look outside and you take off and so bad habits develop so I think it really is important to 
step up in that pocket. And and Kyle, I want to, as far as like D lineman, uh, we have a bunch of questions here from some viewers. One is from uh, DeWindy City Productions on Twitter. He goes, who was the most annoying D lineman he had, or you had to go up against in your, your career outside of Akeem Hicks? You can't pick him. Annoying um, in terms of like, God, I got to go block him. Yes. Mike Daniels. Uh, number 76, Green Bay Packers. Uh, Geno Atkins was Ooh, another okay. one. Okay. Now, he didn't say a word. God, he was just so hard to <laughs> like. You couldn't even guys that that thick aren't supposed to be able to move laterally that quick and be able to change directions. He would keep you up at night. Um, I'm trying to think of uh, any other ones. Clay Matthews, oh, fucking hated being on the field Jeez. with that guy. I hated being on the field with that guy. You're so good, so good, so fucking you handsome. Didn't... You didn't have to go against uh, Donald, did you? You was around the end. No, well, I was a tackle when we played them his rookie year. And I was glad that I played him when I was a tackle because Vlad (laughs) Nukas was in there just getting fucking punched in the chest like by by a dinosaur the whole game. Uh, And then we played them in 2018, and it was like right. right after I had broken my foot, like week 10 or something. Oh. Yeah, Deion Sims landed on me after. The, I'm always getting landed on after plays. Like that's were, what I, it's always in like four minutes. Were you at that? You were at the game though. And it I was, was at, at Soldier Field 2018. That was that was electric. That was it was, as, game. It was as beautiful uh, an offensive line performance put together by Harry Heastan, the offensive line coach. I remember mm-hmm. James Daniels and all the boys were just stout and they were up for the challenge and the fans stood up and they knew how big that game was. Great. I was at that one. It was cold as hell. Was that that was when Mitch had all those picks, but then golf up. Golf them had like just as many. Four as well. Yeah. That it dude, was, the 2018 year. It was like, <laughs> we're wow. gonna get some turnovers. <laughs> this is awesome. Absolutely. I I actually have a it kind of goes into this this question here about 2018, but it's in regards to Mitch. What was your favorite memory um, with Mitch Trubisky what, during your time playing with him? That was from Trap Fizzy on Twitter. Man, I can't. I couldn't tell you one. Um, yeah. I can just tell you that you know there's certain people you cross paths with, and when you're asked about him, you know exactly how you feel about him. And I, I just love Mitch. He was such a tough, tough dude, and so freaking athletic, and. You know, the same things that people loved about Fields and the, you know, making plays with his legs. And, you know, Mitch was doing it too. And he had a little Manziel to his game uh, yeah. when he was playing with us in 2018. And him and Nagy really had a good thing going. It was a shame to see that thing come to an end. But to see him in a Pro Bowl hat probably is the coolest thing. Um, You're right I there know, with him. I know how hard it is to, uh, to get there. And I know how hard it is to play quarterback in Chicago. And, you know, he toughed it out, and nobody will ever be able to take that away from him. I love that. Um, in regards to the Bears organization, there was a story, I think it was The Athletic, talked about how much you love Chicago, you love being a part of it. Is there any – would you – What as far as, like, it could be assistant to the assistant GM, like, is there any position you would like to perhaps maybe come back to Chicago and be a part of that organization, whether it be coaching, special assistant, or anything like that? Or do you think you're – you think that's kind of just – you know. I stay involved with it, Dave. Um, not from an in-house perspective, but I got two young daughters at home under two. Yeah, and you know I work in the media, and I really try to limit the hours I'm out of the house um, because it's important for me to be around, and it's a lot of fun. And as you guys understand, family is everything. And absolutely, when I was playing, it was all about me, and you know, so I didn't, you know, I didn't have. I didn't have anybody else. Like it was me and my boys living in a fucking mansion. And it was like, <laughs> let's go play football. Let's go beat the shit out of some guys today. All right. Capiche. And then you're, you, you meet your, That's... your family and it's like, Oh, I understand what I'm doing. So I will say this, I won't be coaching anytime soon, but uh, you know, I, I'm not going to take it off the shelf because uh, I got to wait till the kids are like 16, probably 15, 16 until I can really be like, all right, babe, I'll see you in February. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, trust me. Yeah. And my wife is my wife is like, go coach if that's what you love. But yeah. I love what I'm doing now too. Um, I like the media; it's cool. But I'd like to get some hands on somebody too and help. I just want to be able to help young guys, man. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, you kind of talked about like that edge, though, when it comes to competing. Have you found that at all, like in the media? Like, is that 
sufficed at all when it regards to like podcasts. I don't want to compete like that. with these fucking nerds, bro. <laughs> <laughs> these guys are so good at their job. I'll tip my cap to them. They are very. <laughs> these guys are and gals are damn good. Like I will put on ESPN. You put on the NFL Network. Peter Schrager. I think about Dan Orlovsky um, at, at ESPN. I, I got to work with Stephen A. a few weeks ago. Shit, my older brother Chris. These guys are professionals. Yeah. They're like classically trained it's like when i showed up to the combine and i ran next to the lineman from duquesne and he looked at me like where the fuck did you come from and i was like that's the reaction i have when i work with the people that i work with because they're so good at it so i don't compete with them i just try to be myself and they pat me on the head and give me a treat every once in a while (laughs) and that's awesome uh so i do like the media in that regard too funny man who's the best uh person that you've worked with in Are terms most- of just like I've been so imp- like so impressed. Yeah, it could be impressed. The McCordies, be- the McCordies are great. They make okay. it look easy. Um, Was Stephen A. pretty cool? Stephen, I mean, yeah, Stephen A. is like yeah. the most elite character ever, and you realize he's not a character. He's uh, that's just him. Like he doesn't play a character. We were hanging out with him backstage before we did like an hour and a half podcast. And I thought, I was like, is, are we recording? Cause he's really acting like we're recording. I was like, that's just how he is, bro. He is dialed in and he can't wait to go toe to toe with whoever the fuck lines up with him at ESPN. I don't have that in me because I'm assuming that the person that I'm working with prepares more than me. So I'm like, <laughs> you go off King. I'm going to be, you know, ask me whatever you got to ask me later. That's too funny. As far as um, – Vicky, you have a question before we let no, no, Kyle get out here? No, you're good. You're good. Yeah, I, I wanted to kind of bring it back to – we touched on it briefly, but I, one of my favorite acquisitions, obviously DeAndre Swift I like, but Keenan Allen, like you talked about how helpful he's going to be for ha- perhaps for Caleb Williams and a rookie quarterback. What were your initial thoughts when you saw it on the timeline? I don't know how you heard about it, maybe Twitter, ESPN. What were your thoughts on Keenan Allen – I'm into Chicago, then also being at the pro day with Caleb Williams. I was listening to that song by the the artist DJO Joe DJO. It's like when I'm back in Chicago. Okay, that one it, on the airplane. Horrible turbulence. Thought I was gonna die. I was actually heading to <laughs> Chicago. Landed, and I got the alert that it was like I texted my wife. It was like I'm alive. I That's hope good. you're happy. And <laughs> the next the next text that came in was we just signed Caleb Williams, and I was so excited. First off. My Madden team just got better. Hell yeah. Second off, yes, sir. our rookie quarterback is going to get better. The receivers in that room are going to benefit from that. The coaches that will be working with Keenan. That's one thing people forget is that players become coaches, become, you know, a guy like Keenan Allen, who's in head to toe bears team issued gear at the pro day is a guy who gives a fuck and he's invested physically, emotionally, and mentally. And I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to offer these younger players and the staff uh, about the offenses that he's been a part of because they've been special. Yeah, I think spot on. He's going to be a great mentor to a lot of these young guys, even someone like DJ Moore. I mean, this man knows how to find any zone in any coverage and just sit there and get the ball to him. So it should be exciting. It'd be a great uh, safety lever for uh, Caleb, for sure. Kyle, where are you ranking that duo, Keenan Allen and DJ Moore? Is that top five? Are you, I mean, I have to. We'd have to go through them. You want to go through yeah. them? I mean, let's do it. Yeah. Gonna do. Here's what I'm going to do. I think there was a graph, Google, actually. I'm going to Google best receiver rankings. And if there's anything, best receiver tandem. I'm sorry, tandem, better word than duo. Go to school. <laughs> go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Ahead of the 2023. Okay, so last year, top 10 was Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. So if last year, top 10 was Keenan Allen, Mike Williams in the Chargers, you'd have to put them top five with uh, DJ Moore. Easily. In my opinion. Uh, CD Lamb, Brandon Cooks, last mm. going into last year. Mike Evans, Chris Godwin. Uh, Debo and Ayuk. Have you guys seen Ayuk's Instagram stories? He's yeah, Money Talks. Money Talks Bullshit, bullshit walks. walks. That's so great. I'm like, dude, he's in a fucking sauna. He's just like stretching, like I love holding it. his team hostage. No, I love it. I love. I love when the players have the control now. That's that's great. Dude, we are the NBA now. Yeah. It should always like, be like that. You guys we're go still playing football, after- but it's the NBA. But, but I feel like, like four years ago, it wasn't really like that. I feel like it's just no. – 
last what two years or so? I, I don't know. Twitter in 2013, and people looked at me like I was a radical communist. <laughs> they were like, you have opinions and you put them on the internet. My dad looked at me like I was crazy. I was like, yeah, I just type my thoughts. He's like, and then people can say things to you. He's like, why do you do that? Uh, but now it, everybody's got a pod. Everybody's got a platform, a Twitch stream. Everybody's with fucking Aiden Ross. And, you know, we can't keep these kids. You know, we can't keep these kids out of trouble. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, that's fair. There if you think you have anything other i have one more thing for, for no, go ahead, go ahead. Out here. it was um this is from your honor colt um a, a question it was a good one because one of my favorite players jay cutler i know it's polarizing uh he said uh we need some good stories about cuddy so do you have anything you want to share that you can so, jay jay is one of the most prepared people ever not just on the field yeah. but in life like you know if a zombie apocalypse busted out i'd be like I'm going to Jay's house. Um, well, at training camp, he had one of the most legendary setups. I mean, he had, it wasn't like he had the Russell Wilson suite, but <laughs> within that room that he had, it was the coming to America uh, Prince apartment setup. Remember he had like the yeah. hot tub and the, yep. the the lava lamps. Well, Jay had like an industrial size freezer refrigerator. They like, we had meals in the cafeteria. They delivered all of his meals. This is before blank meal service, you know, cause they're not paying us tonight, these fuckers. So <laughs> he would have all these meal services sent in there. He also had like an 80 inch screen TV and with super Nintendo, we played Tecmo oh, that's every night. The guy was really good at Tecmo. Um, I just wish more people could have been a fly on the wall in the day-to-day interactions with with Cuddy and all the guys because <laughs> he would make you cringe sometimes because he was so brutally honest, and then he would make you laugh sometimes. And he's a character; just people don't have an appreciation for him. Yeah, yeah, I feel like more people like appreciate him now than back when he's when he was when he was yes. there. You know what I mean? Yeah, so and now so, I mean, he's I, kind of taking a step back. He did all those shows with uh Redacted, and now uh he's redacted. doing his own thing again. <laughs> redacted, that's funny. Yeah, <laughs> good, I don't even him. know what redacted means. I saw it in a book one time. <laughs> Go to school, right? <laughs> I think it's like I think Ricky. Like, wait, wait, oh my bad, my bad. I didn't know you traded <laughs> <my bad. laughs> Uh, uh, Kyle, before we let you go, though, you did mention it. And I know last time we, we talked about it on the pod, but how's how's the Madden coming? Did you as get fran- better. Have you done franchise better? You're getting better with getting the Getting better, Madden. We should do a game one night. Chris and I are actually setting up the so we can Twitch stream it like when oh, we perfect. play. Maybe one night we'll do it. I was watching, Kyle. You were playing against your brother. I was watching this for 30 minutes. I did this. I was watching through the window of your the stream i was like trying to see i was like i was trying to you know we're getting updates and everything but i was just like man I, you guys are you so you're going to be streaming it right twitch live as far as those type of battles and everything yeah i'm not sure when but we're going to definitely make it happen we'll be on yeah. youtube twitch all that stuff i feel like a you lot know, of play i yeah, think like a ahead. lot of NFL players are playing madden right now they've been playing it for a Maybe minute the off season like everybody has always minutes. played madden yeah guys are now finding out that they can make money doing it like I had a Twitch in 2016 and like nobody was watching. And then like 2018, I had 30,000 followers and I don't stream anymore. But like if I was a receiver and I started in 2015 and didn't stop, I'd have, I'd be like Nick Merckx. Cha-ching. Yes. Dramatic. Justin Jefferson played every night. If Justin Jefferson played Warzone every night yeah. and did anything but be silent, he would have 12,000 people watching him. Speaking of like the, you mentioned the NBA, how the NFL's become more the NBA. I think the NBA was kind of first on that too. Like their guys be streaming all the time. They market their guys. Yes. And yes, baseball doesn't do it. My buddy, Eric Hosmer, um, World Series champ from the Royals. He uh, he started his Digging Deep podcast. And it's one of the only baseball podcasts. These baseball guys, of which there are many. They're, they don't have any pods. There's like two or three, and I think one of them is a Pokemon uh, pod. I think oh, there's one with – I think Jared uh, Karabas in Dallas. Karabas, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think it's baseball is dead. That's a decent one. I, I enjoy that's it. That's like – there's not – we yeah. can name 50 football podcasts. <laughs> Easily. More. I don't watch basketball, and I can name five basketball podcasts. 
LeBron yeah. just started one too. Like, you know what I mean? It's, I, I think it is funny though. If you look at like the NBA versus NFL versus MLB, it's like, if it's almost like M the NBA is like 10 years ahead, the NFL is like 10 months ahead and the MLB is like 10 years behind. It just seems yeah. like that is the, that is the case. They typically, and they're just trying to find ways invested. to get people to watch. Right. Right. Kyle, I don't know how I forgot this. Do you like the kickoff rule? I don't know. Have you been a chance to look at that? Um, I haven't really looked at it much. Um, and my wife is, uh, my wife is in need of a bottle. Oh, no, no. you, you, you yeah, get out of here, that, Kyle. Yeah. You do your thing. I'm like just you letting said, her know I'll be down in a second, but this is no, awesome. Good. We got to hang out for like 40 minutes and chat. Absolutely. And Dude. I hope the people in the, in the chat are, are nicer next time to me. So <laughs> we'll make sure of that. <laughs> we'll we're, sure. we're Thanks guys. And we're uh, going to disable we'll the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Absolutely. Kyle. Thank you, man. Thanks, Kyle. You have a great night. All right, boys. Thanks again. I right, peace out. Daddy duties. Yeah, oh, he's not going to be coaching anytime soon. No, no, no. Honestly, got... I forgot about that. Like, I, I saw the athletic story about him. Obviously, it was more than just coaching and what he would want to do maybe in the future. But I just thought, you know, he would be a good one. So selfish oh, me, yeah. I'm like, would love to see it. But absolutely, I think – 16 years down the road, he could be maybe getting a head coaching gig, you know? Oh, absolutely. Maybe. I mean, he's still young, just out of the league. You know what I mean? And the kids will be grown by then. So, yeah, it's spot on. But, yeah, if he's he's, he's got to worry about bottles right now. So, before he's worried about grown-ass men in the trenches. So <laughs> No, absolutely. Good to have uh, but, anyways, shout-out to Kyle. Uh, Kyle Long, former Bear, friend of the show. We appreciate him hopping on, as always. Um, really fun conversation. Uh, if you enjoyed it, go ahead and leave a like if you can. Um, really helps uh, support the the pod, the community that we're building. Um, if it's your first time, go and hit the uh, subscribe button. Uh, we're on Apple and Spotify as well. And uh, again, shout out to Kyle Long. Check out his podcast, the Greenlight Podcast, uh, with his brother, uh, Chris. It's awesome. They have amazing guests. And also just the banter between everybody on that pod is just hilarious. So you guys know it. Give Kyle a follow. I think it's Kyle Long uh, with a one, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. You yeah. guys saw it on when he was here on there. But again, shout out to Kyle. We appreciate it. Um, Vicky. Also, any if other you thoughts? are, yeah, no, the Kyle Long was great. Um, and also, if you're new, new here, yeah. first time subscriber or well, first time viewer or subscriber, go ahead and give a hashtag new face gang in the chat. We'll make sure to give you a shout out before the end of the show. Also, if you've been here for a good minute, right, this is your second time watching, your 50th time watching, anything in between, go ahead and give a hashtag OG in the chat and we'll give you a shout out as well. But yeah, with Kyle, it's great. I mean, I think why we enjoy talking to Kyle so much is he's just like down to earth. You know what I mean? It's like you don't realize you're talking to a Pro Bowl veteran, you know, guard who played in the league for so many years, you know? It just seems like you're just talking to your bro. So I think that's why we really appreciate him hopping on and and doing his thing, giving his honest opinion. So I do like him. The green light pot is really good. I think Chris delivers like his opinions really well. Kyle brings a lot of great personality on there. So, uh, you know, you guys really should check that out if you haven't yet. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, again, yeah. Shout out to Kyle. Can't say it enough. I, I want to move on. We, if you guys have any questions, go ahead and throw them in the chat. We'll, we'll go ahead and maybe answer those before we get out of here. Um, I want to kind of move on um, to Ryan Poles today. He was on the Pat McAfee show, a show, um, Ficky. And he obviously had a really candid interview. First of all, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on YouTube, I'm sure, uh, by now. But one of the main quotes that I thought was awesome, it obviously was electric. It was in regards to RG3 and his comments about a week and a half ago about Caleb Williams. And this was fresh after the Justin Fields trade. And RG3 kind of went to Twitter, and he got bombarded by, you know, obviously Bears Twitter, Bears media, outside fans, I mean, NFL Analyst, everyone. you know, everyone, <laughs> everyone came to bat for Chicago, which is hilarious. But he cool. went ahead and yeah. he went ahead and basically said that Caleb needs to pull an Eli Manning like the like he did with the Chargers back in what, 2003. Yeah. And he needs to not go to Chicago. And everyone was up in arms. And and first of all, I agree outside of where we are right now, because this is the best circumstance. We talked about it with Kyle Long here. There's no better position for a rookie quarterback, let alone a number one overall right now than Chicago Bears who just traded obviously for Keenan Allen and have the weapons around him and the and the trenches. But Ficky, Ryan Poles, he was on the Pat McAfee and first of all, he's hilarious. He pulls some really good quotes from people and, and Poles Poles was again check out the just the interview because his body language doesn't even get do this quote justice. But he goes on the comments about RG3, he goes, it pisses me off a little bit, to be honest with you, because we were uh we were brought here to break the cycle. 
I really believe we are about to break the cycle. And there's, again, there's a whole nother 58 seconds of this that are just awesome. But for me, Vicky, I'll start with you. This is refreshing, is it not? Absolutely, right? This, I mean, it's, I get, I get it. I get why people are like same old bears, right? That is totally fair. I can totally get why people come at that. But if we look at what Ryan Pace has done so far, he's only proven to us over and over again that he knows what he's doing. He, like you said, he set up a really good situation for a quarterback, a rookie quarterback to be successful. So if we go back to the RG3 comments, right? He's like, pull the Eli, go to the commanders because obviously Caleb is from DC, right? So you're telling me if you're going to look at dysfunction, you, it makes more sense to go to the commanders who just cleaned everyone's had one of the worst owners in NFL history because of how dysfunctional it is. And, and that's a better situation, right? When you look at their talent, nowhere near, of course, they had a lot of cap space, but the yeah. talent is not even an inch of what the bears have. So even from the logical standpoint of like, Oh, go to a better situation. Like if you would have said, Oh, skip the bears and go to uh, the jets, maybe, or when I, maybe not jets, but like, let's say uh, like, Kansas City. Let's say Patrick's yeah. not there. I'd Fuck be like, Aaron oh. Rodgers, right? <laughs> right, facts. Or if you would have said Green Bay, realistically. Like, if he was like, forget the Bears, hold out. Let's say Green Bay had the second pick. Go to Green Bay. I'd be like, you know what? I could totally get that. They have, they're have they way more functional. They have been for decades. A winning culture. Go there. But to say the commanders, that's not – I mean, it's that makes no sense. And so I'm glad that Poles is basically being like, yo, RG3. Okay, Poles, I know you didn't say this. But he's like, fuck you. Like, no, I came here to change the narrative about this team that's been the same for the past two decades. And so far, he's shown it. If we look at his moves so far, like, wouldn't you agree, Dave? Like, most of his moves, you'd be like, that was great. I mean, look how excited we're oh, yeah. this offseason. His signings, his trades. He did the same shit last season. So yeah. I don't know. I'm glad that I finally get a GM that's like, like, like Kyle said, and being like, nah, like I'm changing the narrative here. That's so stupid. Like I've shown you that I'm literally making the right moves to make this team as good as possible. So I know I just went on a rant about it because I was kind of pissed too. I'm like, yo, that is such a stupid take. Nothing against yeah. RG3 as a person, but like I'm saying that take was dumb. Easy as that. Yeah. No, yeah. Um, anyways, enough of RG3. I think you're I think it was just a really good interview with with Ryan Poles. I'm glad that he like I said, it's refreshing for a GM to be just so openly honest and, you know, for just so forward with everybody. Yeah. You know, obviously he's not giving up, you know, the secrets. He's not giving out, you know, the draft board and everything like that. But he he's so candid and he gives a lot of good sound bites and a lot of, you know, authentic interviews that I'm just with Ryan Pace, with even, you know, just everyone. Like I feel like even all other GMs across the league just aren't as electric as he is you know which is cool to see but he talked about again because they're at the owners meeting about how he had to come in and basically fix everything right he had to tear it down you know which is you know he even talked about justin not doing him you know right you know in year two just because of they had to tear it down they had the there was a mess from the previous regime that he had to clean up he was open about it and he talked about one of the biggest things here, Vicky, that we we talked about all throughout the, the one the regular season and then now in the off season about how it wasn't really just Justin Fields versus a rookie quarterback. That was Ryan Poles' words yesterday, or is it today? I kind of slipped and it, you know, as far as when that interview took place. But he talked about it wasn't that simple. It was the the financial aspect, right? With Caleb Williams and what that first round pick and that that I think it was what was the word, Vicky? Help me here. It was like the um uh, like a plane where it's coming down. Uh, Ryan Poles you. said it. He basically <laughs> said the runway. That's what it was. The oh, runway's longer with with a rookie quarterback outside of if you went with Justin, where that runway, it's shorter. You're already you in year four. You got to pick up. You got to potentially pick up that option um, right now. Justin Fields, you stick with him. He's going to have that leverage because he's going to want to deal. You're like, you, hey, you passed – twice now on a rookie quarterback and the first overall pick. So pay me all of these things. And you throw in Justin Fields, whose agent is David Mangetta, I believe who is, I mean, 
one of the best in the business, if not the best agent in regards to getting his clients money. So for me, that answer right there, it kind of just, it rewards, not rewards, it solidifies what we were all talking about. Like it wasn't always that simple about Justin versus, you know, a rookie quarterback. No, it was, that's why when we talked about those last seven games, when he came back last year, where it was like, he damn near has to be not just good, but perfect, perfect dude. Yeah. Because it isn't just Caleb. It isn't just Drake May, Jaden Daniels, JJ McCarthy, or anything like that. No, it's everything else that comes along with potentially going with that rookie quarterback. And so for me, I thought it was just it was um again, I'm not gonna use the word refreshing, but it was it was um enlightening to see that hey, he actually is he's good, he's competent. And we we all should know that, but it's it's really cool to see kind of he pulled back the curtain a little bit about the Justin Fields um, saga and how it came to end. But we were all but kind we, of right at the end. Yeah, but we we knew we knew that's what Ryan Poles was thinking. That's what we kept talking about. It was like uh, this is pretty obvious. It's just that like you say, you don't see many GMs come out and like kind of <laughs> give you like the actual reasons of why they make decisions. You know what I mean? And Poles has been like that since he's gotten here, right? He doesn't give up all the juice. But he is the most transparent GM that I can remember, at least in Bears history. And I've only seen about five or six. But like he, he's like, hey, look, this is this is what happened. These are the reasonings through this whole process. He kind of, I think that's why it he's building trust within the fan media to GM relationship. I know that doesn't matter that much because he can just go make whatever decisions he wants. But it is nice from our side because we go, okay. That makes sense, you know what I mean. And look, like you, like like we said, the extension, the fifth year option and extension was a huge portion of this. I don't care what you say, because I know you agree. But if you extend him the fifth year and he balls out, bro, now you're paying him a good amount. I think we, uh, I think Spo Trek at the time, I think we mentioned this. It was something like six years, two eighty or something like that. Like that's no. <laughs> That's no cheap money, bro. That's a big deal. It may not be as big as some of these other quarterbacks, but you're investing a lot into one position. Being able to restart with the quarterback, give yourself some more runway, leeway, figure out if Caleb is the guy, right? Hopefully so. And you can still go spend elsewhere, right? And even build even a better roster to help build confidence with your rookie quarterback, which we've already seen him do, right? So we both... I mean, yeah. we, we both, we both I, uh, you know, wanted Justin, but I think that was the right financial decision to make. Yeah, no, I I, I, I want to get to this real quick. I'm going to bring this up, Jack. Um, but it says, Laz on here, sounds like you both changed your view on trading bills. Weren't you big on keeping him and not drafting Caleb? Now you're all in on that after Kyle said it was the right move. So um, first of all, I don't know if Laz is new here. No, he's if not. You know he's, me, he's OG. If you know me and you follow me on Twitter, you can look back at even the the Justin Fields episode last week where we reacted him being traded. I mean, I just took down my my sign here. I can bring it back up, but it, I was in the camp of keeping Justin and trading back and getting Marvin Harrison Jr. and getting that haul. But now, and Ficky, you know, kudos to him. He realized the writing was in the wall, you know, a little bit earlier than I. I stuck with it. But first of all, Kyle is right. I think we all kind of understand like this is the best opportunity for him. But for me. I, I think it's just so important that, especially on just Bears Twitter and Bears socials, it's like everyone is allowed to change their stance. Like th that's just the that's sports, man. Like if that's if you get if circumstances change or you know there is new information there or is. hell, the fact that they did move on from Justin and now it's Caleb Williams, like everyone is allowed to be on the Caleb Williams bandwagon now. Like As sure, you should. may have hated him. You may have now if you went and like went after his character and all that and like we're just over the top sure i can understand maybe getting some pushback there but everyone like we can't like you know gatekeep being a bears fan or supporting a quarterback like i fucking love justin fields i was rooting for him so hard and i wanted him to succeed in chicago and i, I understand that he failed and the bears obviously failed him at the end of the day but for yeah. me it's like caleb williams is is a is going to be a bear and i think we all should just be able to embrace that without getting pushback without getting comments and i understand that's never going to change. Social media is social media. So everyone's going to be, there's going to be people in the comments and that's just perks of the trade. But for me, it's like gatekeeping and not allowing, you know, people to enjoy such a fun time ahead where the bears could be on hard knocks. They have two number one wide receivers. They have Caleb Williams, a generational or just not even that 
a fucking fantastic quarterback prospect that is coming into Chicago who is not only ready, but he's built for it, man. He's the biggest star in probably college sports history as far as NLI, NIL and getting yep. money already, millions of dollars, what, 10 plus million. Easy. And then he, you go on Twitter right now, you see his confidence at his pro day. And then Ryan Paul's talking about his teammates. They love him. They don't just like him. They love him. All those red flags that were spun early on, you know, during the NFL, NFL wow. season, college, it's gone, man. So for me, it's like, I think everyone should be embracing it. For the people that hated the move, that love Justin Fields, and they're ready to, you know, come on board, don't gatekeep. You know, like it just pisses yeah. me off. And I feel like everyone's allowed to have a change in opinion, especially at such a big, you know, change in Bears history. Like Justin Fields is no longer that quarterback no, no, or no longer a quarterback in Chicago. So it's like, I think it's a, it's a, for it's it should be allowed to be like okay yeah I wanted this to happen but we're we're going in this direction that's okay like I feel like gatekeeping is just it's the stupidest thing to do. Well, I think Long you made a great rant. point. You know, you're good. I, I think you're spot on, spot on on all of those. I think a, a a great point that you made was you are allowed to change your opinion with new information. Right? We were Fields fans. More information came on. I'm like, well, maybe <laughs> you know, it doesn't look like Fields is gonna be here, right? So my opinion starts to change. You know, more information's fed. I'm like, well, I would love for him to be here, but Adam Schefter keeps giving me notifications that they're looking at Caleb yeah. Williams. So it's like, what am I supposed to do? So, yeah, I agree. I mean, at the end of the day, right? We're Bears fans. You can be a Bears fan and a Fields fan. That's totally fair, right? You can support Fields on Pittsburgh. Hope he does well. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, my priorities are. I'm a Bears fan. So whether it's Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels, any of the quarterbacks that we've had, every quarterback drafted. I didn't want Mitch drafted him. I'm backing up Mitch. You know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's whoever's exactly. in that Navy. And if orange, you supported, right? if you supported Rex Grossman, oh, if you supported, goodness, you know, guys even before him. Now I'm only going to go back to Rex, maybe Kyle Orton, because that's when I started. Oh, that's I when I Kyle. was. Yeah, but then Caleb Haney, right? You got Jay Cutler. You got fucking Mike Glennon for a little bit, right? <laughs> Long Mitch day. Trubisky. I mean, I supported him. It's like if you went through all this shit and you – all these quarterbacks, like give me a break about gatekeeping. Give me a break about not being able to move on from Justin and, and, and support Caleb because for me, first of all, Ryan Pohl's doing what he did, thank God, because like before the pro day, awesome. We talked about how that would have been disgusting. It would have been – People would have been analyzing those throws if if Justin was still on the roster and had a chance to potentially still be the quarterback next year. But the fact that he moved on from him, it allowed, I think, a lot of people, and I, I won't speak for everyone, but for me, it's like, okay, now we're moving on. Yeah. It's a new chapter. chapter. Close. Yeah. And I'm excited as hell. We got Caleb Williams, I mean, chirping. I mean, Ficky, in the group chat, you're throwing all these replies that Caleb – this guy is, a, is electric, man. And yeah. I love how Kyle said he – he the fact that he – um is like this and hopefully he doesn't change this because I think Kyle said it perfectly. Like they need, this is, they need someone who's going to be the guy that's going to be a public figure. That's not afraid of the media. Like not that Jay and Mitch were, but they just didn't want anything to do with it. Right. Caleb, he is already that mega superstar type quarterback. And now he's going to the biggest market in the NFL who needs, who's never had one, but needs Whoa. one and has a chance to be that guy in probably the best situation. Like we talked about ever for a rookie quarterback, let alone number one overall pick. He comes in here and thrives. They will build a statue faster than any statue's ever been built in Bears history. Like we all know as Bears fans, I think that's why this Fields thing was so polarizing. Is because we are so desperate, man. We are in the desert with no water, right? Any sign of it, mm -hmm. we're like, it doesn't matter if it's a gallon, if it's just a drip from a faucet. We are holding on to that because we have not seen water for miles, right? And so here comes this big water cooler a big tank right coming in the middle of the desert and we're almost like well what about this dripping faucet and it's like bro no 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 i don't think you even know what's in store <laughs> that could possibly happen right and again we don't know right but at least from what we've been told from analysts and things like that caleb seems like the real deal and you know what another good thing right we talk about the justin field saga right yeah and the, it, the issue was that they didn't set him up for success easily came in the first year horrible right at least now, if Caleb doesn't succeed, not saying just the first year, like, but let's say two years, right? He's like, yo, this isn't it. We now know Poles has an easy decision, an easier one now, because like, look, I gave you what you need. Like, if you can't thrive with an all pro DJ Moore, all pro Keena Allen, even an older one, right? But still all pro, a, like the line is decent. Yeah. It may not be the best, but it's not garbage. And you have a, a, a good running back room and you have 
pretty good tight end room now, even upgraded from last year, which is crazy. Like, I don't know yeah. what else you can provide right to him on at least on the offensive side. So mm. that's why I, I'm well, a little bit more inclined to see that he's probably going to succeed just because of how do you have two 1000 yard receivers and not play well? Like you'll have some picks and whatnot. I get that, but you got two. No, dogs back. you're right. Unless he's dog shit, meaning Caleb Williams. I mean, he is going to thrive. He's going to be, he's probably going to have better record. He's going to have, he's going to break, you know, as long as he still healthy, he's probably going to break the rookie bears, rookie passing record as or, far as like 2,200 yards, something like that. Oh, easily. No, that's bro. That's, yeah. that's not even possible. You have like, like two dude, wide receivers on the team that had over 22 together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Not I need to bring up, get those, but, and there's an awesome clip of, uh, or there's an awesome stat. Where was it? I'm going to bring it up right now. While um, you looked it up, I do have one question for you. Hopefully it doesn't throw you off track. Oh, I got four, it. Four K. You think he's getting four K this year? No, nah, I won't ever say it until I see it. I can't. What about three? Like what a, about what about meet me at thirty two? What field? No, if he, if he stays, if he still, if he stays healthy, uh, if he stays healthy, he plays all seventeen games. Yeah, he's getting thirty two. Okay. He can, how can you not? How can you? Unless he's dog shit, like I said, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah, just no the way. way. There's no there's way, man. No way. On paper, but, this team's ridiculous. But look yeah. at his college. I have the stats right here, Vicky. Okay. This is comparing to Caleb Williams. And I think we have a super chat and then oh, we have yeah, a couple questions we we're going to get to. But let's get to the super chat first and let's then I'll, I'll bring up this stat. Absolutely. I'll pull up right here. Oh, my is bad. Is there a guy, Tito? I, yes, I Tito. Him. Sorry about that, Jack. I always be stealing you. It's a bad habit. Okay. Um, Tito here, $5 super chat. Our boy Tito said, with the number nine pick, the Chicago Bears pick, question mark, I say verse, Jared verse DN from uh, Florida State. Definitely need another DN opposite sweat. We need pressure. If all big three wide receivers are gone, who y'all got? I'm going to say I do like Jared Verse out of the two just because of the 4-3. He's more of that prototypical DN for, um, for Flus's defense. But I'll, let, I'll leave this for you, Dave. All three wide receivers are gone. Who are you taking? It doesn't have to be an edge, though. It could be whatever. No, anything. Give me Brock. Give me Brock Bowers. Like, you want it? Absolutely, dude. I mean, I won't be, be electric, bro. However, I, I do it. like as far as like edge, I do like Dallas Turner. I don't even know if he's gonna be at nine. Like he may go early, he may go Atlanta or something like Ooh, that. Like, man. but I would not be opposed. But for me, it's like go offense, man. Let's go all in. Our defense is already fucking fantastic. Like you talked about how Caleb is set up offensively, but you look at the defensive side of the ball where you have a bunch of dogs, a bunch of guys who are ready to take that even another leap. Because last year, those last what eight games. Electric dominant shut you down. See the top five in the NFL. Did you see the stat on uh, Good Morning Football with uh Kyle? No, uh, he what basically he uh, uh Kyle Brandt was basically saying, like, he was trying to make the his co host guess like how well the Bears defense was the last six games, like yeah. when they ranked, bro. Love Kyle. And like three different categories, I can't remember the exact ones, maybe I pulled it up. It was first in all three categories, last six games. That's how the crazy year. they were. They were so good, man. They were like, right, so a rookie quarterback's best friend. Defense. Most people say is a defense, dude. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, and Better field and now you got one that could rival. I'm not going to say 2018, but like they showed phases of taking the ball last year or taking the ball away. I think they led the NFL in turnovers, right? Uh, and Rated. interceptions. I think they had like 20 interceptions. 23. It's just yeah. crazy. Something nuts. Or they're just, they, it's going to be fun to see what, what that defense does next year. And then they yeah. have, say they have a, an offense. I'm not going to say quarter, but say they have an offense that puts up 20, 25, 28 points a game. I don't even know what that means. What 20? What is that? Dangerous. Bro? But speaking <laughs> of offensive prowess, let me talk about Caleb Williams and Justin Fields compared in yeah. college because I think it's interesting. I didn't even know the drastic. You know what I'm talking about. This is yep. from Ben Devine uh, on Twitter or X, whatever you want to call it, Chicago underscore NFL. I don't even know how he got that. He must have been around a while to get Chicago underscore NFL. That is an insanely That's cool um, username on Twitter. So he said – Caleb Williams, he was comparing Caleb Williams and Justin Fields' prospect, prospects in college in regards to statistics. So college or career college games, 37 for Caleb Williams. Justin Fields played 34. That is, that is a key um, uh, stat here to remember because when I go through these stats, it's insane. Caleb Williams in 37 career games in college, 1,099 passing attempts. He had 10,082 passing yards, 93 passing touchdowns, 14 interceptions, he also had 960 rushing yards for tw and 27 rushing touchdowns. Now let me move down to Justin Fields. 34 games, like I mentioned earlier. 598 passing attempts. So 
ha- less than half of what Caleb has done. 5,701 passing yards. Again, about a little half. more than half. Um, and then you have 67 passing touchdowns, nine interceptions, which is great. 1,133 rushing yards and 19 rushing touchdowns. So for right. me, Ficky, before I kind of let, get let you talk about that, because I think that's, there's a lot to unpack there. For me, one, double the passing, right? Unreal. In only th- three more games. And then you got one of the biggest things is about Fields and his rushing ability. And we talked about how Caleb is a good athlete. You can even say well, elite. Yeah, I think he has, absolutely. you could say he's, he's pretty damn, he's pretty good at moving. But right. to have just um, the same amount of pat- rushing, he actually had more touchdowns, but less passing yards, but not by much, by like 100 or something like that. So for me, my biggest takeaway is like, Caleb is electric, dude. Like, I remember looking at fields coming out of college and those stats, like seeing nine interceptions, 67 passing touchdowns. Crazy. Those are insane numbers, right? Yeah. And then you got Caleb. Like, this is why people are like generational superstar because of (laughs) that shit right there is, I honestly thought it was a fake tweet. Like, I was like, there's no way. But this shows you how much better of a prospect Caleb William is than Justin coming out. And I'd even maybe, I didn't even realize it right away. Like, again, kind of fogged when Justin was here and we had that big debate, the great debate, the Twitter debate, mm-hmm. the Bears debate, whatever you want to call it about it. Call it. It just, it shows how an insane of a prospect he is and how excited I think everyone in Chicago or outside of Chicago, if you're a Bears fan, wherever you are, this is a fun, fun chapter that's like starting to begin here in what, less than a month, like you said, from the draft. Got a crazier stat for you. Fields did that with three wide receivers that were drafted in the first round. (laughs) Thank you. Caleb Caleb Williams did it with one. Jordan Addison. Brendan Rice, too, though. Yeah, he's not going to go first. I like him. No, but I I do like him. Yes. I I know what you're saying. His best three wide receivers in order Jordan Addison, who went first Mm -hmm. to the Vikings in the first round, I mean. Marvin Mims, when he was in Oklahoma, I don't know. He did not go first round, but he definitely was drafted, like, I think second or third. And then Brandon uh-huh. Rice, he's probably going to go three or four, right? Or maybe even a little bit earlier. But, like, you compare that to what Fields was working with, Garrett Wilson, Chris Olave, J- uh, JSN. <laughs> like, the man had – and I'm not taking anything away from Fields. Fields put up numbers. But yeah, Caleb – But I hear what you're saying, but imagine Caleb Oh no, with that – Wouldn't even close. So, wouldn't it's impressive, dude. Yeah, no, I I, I was in the same boat. Like, obviously, I was like, yeah, Caleb is pretty good, pretty gener, like not generational, but like I can understand why the tag was put on him. But I didn't generational troll. I'll tell you that much. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. But when you see the numbers side to side, because I saw that say, I was like, no, no fucking way. Like I couldn't believe it either. I was like, it's really that. But then it's that drastic of a difference. But then it makes sense when you think about USC, bro. He put up. Fields won games with like 20 in the 20s. You know what I mean? Like the defense was solid, big 10. You know what I mean? You don't have yeah. to score 60 points. Like Caleb literally lost games scoring high 40s. Think about that multiple times. I think he lost a game in the 50s too. Like, like this man had to put up 50 points and still lose. Like how much points and how much yardage and passing? Like it, it makes sense. Like, Especially this year, because he the O line was atrocious. Swiss cheese didn't yeah. have the weapons that he had, at least compared to a lot. He didn't have Jordan Addison's really what I'm saying. Um, yeah, and the defense was even worse than it was the year before. So the man had, you know, he was back against the wall, just slinging the thing. You know what's funny too? Uh, and I'll end on this. Mm-hmm. Another thing, people are like, yo, this is a down year for Caleb. The man still threw for like what 30 plus touchdowns and five interceptions. And he was like, putting that team on his back, dude. Like, we talked about the Bears' defense and what he's coming into the league with on that side of the ball. It was the complete opposite. Bottom of the of college barrel. football. And then Bottom, on the offensive bro. side, he was struggling, too, with the offensive line. You saw some times where it just broke down. It's, it's incredible. Um, before we kind of the, move on to some questions here, Vicky, I, I got a DM from Kyle, and he goes, uh, he, he's gonna need, he wants us to go ahead and pick a winner uh, for his jersey. Um, okay. So if you guys aren't on Twitter, X, um, Kyle is giving away a signed Chicago Bears jersey. Um, he's going to go ahead and mail it to a winner that we select here. Um, what you need to do is go ahead and subscribe to this podcast. But more importantly, 
Subscribe to the Greenlight Podcast as well. It is in the description as we speak. So if you're watching it now, live or after, or if you're on Apple, Spotify, wherever you are, go to our description. Go ahead and um, sub to that channel. Sub to the BFR Podcast. Um, Kyle obviously will be coming on here again, I'm sure, soon. Uh, maybe after the draft, but he is kind enough and excited to give away this jersey. Again, it is a Chicago Bears signed by Kyle himself, and he's going to go ahead and mail it. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time here uh, before we pick a winner, um, maybe before we hop, hop off the show. I will go ahead and do that, or Ficky and I will go ahead and make sure to get that done. I will contact you via um, DM, and I'm going to get you guys your uh, get the address over to Kyle. I'm sure he may reach out to you want to say something as well. But again, shout out to Kyle Long. Awesome, awesome friend of the show. Super excited that he's giving this away. Um, I know we talked about it prior to coming on, so it's really cool that he's he's even uh, that he's going through with this and and doing it for the fans, man. He's a Chicago Bear for life. He said it himself. So again, follow the Green Light Podcast. The link is in our description. Um, and show him some love on Twitter again. And then, of course, the Green Light Pod on Twitter. Somehow they have the Green Light at as well. That's a sick that's a sick username on, on X or Twitter, whatever you want to call it. So, again, shout out to Kyle Long, Chicago Bears jersey giveaway. Uh, we'll do it at the end of the show here, which I'm sure will be um, – eh, who knows? We, we we might go a couple more hours if you all are lucky. <laughs> so We always got something to talk about. I mean, let's be – like Kyle said it, this offseason has been so exciting. Like, yes, we had the – you know, I survived. It all changed. Session, it all but, changed, dude. Yeah. Well, one, the Once trade – Oh, but yes. it's like that Keenan Allen trade was like fucking oh, shockwaves, electricity, dude. It was like it. That's what you needed to get over that Justin Fields. Like, oh shit, that chapter ended. Keenan Allen. Yeah, yeah. What? it was perfect. You know. Timed. Yeah. Anyway, no, but sorry I think to Paul's talk, No, you're good. I think Poles even talked about it too. Like he didn't know that he was a like that was a player that they called un- unexpected. Him and I think Gerald Everett were the two where it was good, like they didn't. Good point. Yeah. Yeah. They did not. They that was not on the forecast. They figured that you know Chargers were going to keep them. Obviously the Chargers were and explain they keep them. Kind of explain that again, Figgy. He's like what it kind of just almost goes over. He said it so quickly. He kind of just yeah. you, you graze over that. And this he's talking about an interview here with I think it was Ryan Poles, right? Yeah. Um, or it was a, a quote here. Uh, with, um, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was yesterday's NFL. interviews. I don't know if it was yesterday's interviews or if it was the one on Pat McAfee, but but basically Ryan Poles was saying like they 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 understand certain players that are going to be available, right? They're expected players. Obviously, like you know Saquon is going to be available. He's not going to get tagged. You knew DeAndre Swift was going to be available. Things like that, right? But obviously, think teams do stuff that are unexpected. Things that you you can't forecast for, and you can't forecast for every situation of every player ever right you can try your best but there's too many players in the nfl right so what happened was as soon as they found out because their 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 intention was brian pole said they were going to go target another wide receiver in free agency i want i would want to know who that is just to be curious to see who they kind of had on their list but as soon as they found out that the chargers were not going to move forward so basically once the talk stalled and they weren't going to give the extension to keenan allen he picked up the phone immediately and said yo let's do this basically like what do you want you can have it now. And basically, that's what happened. You want a fourth? Boom. Sent it off. Keenan Allen. And, and that's why it was so quick. Like, it was like, oh, Chargers are not moving on with Keenan Allen. And literally, it was like minutes later. It was like, oh, he's on the Bears. You know what I mean? You didn't even get time. Like, I saw the news. I didn't even process, like, oh, they're not moving on with them, right? Because it happened so quickly, yeah. right? The news broke, but Brian Poles probably already knew for, you know, a much longer period and was already, you know, trying to get that deal uh, done. So I, I think what you said though, was perfect is like <laughs> to get over the breakup of Justin Fields. Like we nice, needed man. something, right. We need to get like, we need to start dating again. You know what I mean? And it was nice to be like, Oh, here's this crazy trade that no one had on the radar. I literally made the, which I, I made so many of these and none of them came to fruition, but the <laughs> I made a Mike Williams one, a Mike Williams graphic that was so ready. Yeah. To so I'm like, it makes sense. A big target wide receiver. We don't have one easily going to be Mike Williams. No way I was thinking Keenan Allen. And then that's what yeah. happens. You know what I mean? That's so. why it's, it's similar. That's why you talked about it. You said it, uh, the NFL is really just like the NBA now. Like we Love kind of though. taken over that as far as like off season moves, even the trade deadline, which was actually pushed back. So I think scary. they may they approved it where they're pushing it back to all the way to week nine or after yeah. week nine. Yeah, um, nine, that was uh, approved today from the owners meeting in uh, Florida, and so that's that's pretty crazy. I, I'm excited about Keenan Allen. I think it was um, it was a ju- it was just the move just created a lot of juice 
where I think everyone was kind of still, like you said, mourning the, 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 or well, some people weren't, some people were dancing excited, <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure some people uh, were. <laughs> yeah. And as you should be, but like we talked about it, but yeah, yeah. it is such a cool, it's been a crazy off season already. And now, I mean, the draft is even here, dude. And free agency, yeah, it's kind of died down, but there's always that fine, you know, the, um, you know, fourth, fifth, sixth waves. And you got like yeah. even around training camp where there's He's other like, additions, like uh, I think it was Yannick and Gakwe last year, right? Yep. Around training like, camp or something yeah, like that. Around like September, I think. So there's like, more yeah, moves. August. There's more moves um, to be made. And one thing I want to bring up here about the draft, because we'll be doing, I'm sure, a, a mock draft episode here again shortly, just because the draft is coming up soon. But one thing about polls, again, on the Pat McAfee show, I believe, he talked about how, yeah, I only have four picks this year. However, uh, in regards to value, I think it's top five in the league. Right. But he, he also mentioned about you know the COVID years and how this draft isn't really deep. He said it himself. He just doesn't see. I feel like it's really working out in his favor because if you look at next year, where a lot of people went back to school, you know, this year in 2024, and they're not entering the draft next year, they're going to be coming out. There's going to be a lot of talent. It's going to be deeper. And the Bears have what nine picks? Possibly taken. Po- possibly ten, 10, ten with a comp. comp, with a picks. comp. Yep. So it's like you're, these guys. I mean, Poles has been sure he may have made a couple mistakes, some signings. You know, I'm not going to bring him up. You know what they are. But it's like he has hit. He has more hits than misses, and as a Way GM, more. that's all you want. However, right now, as we know, the biggest one, the most important one, no matter what, you can ask Ryan Pace. This it's the quarterback. You got to hit on this one. And Caleb Williams kind of landed in our laps because of the Carolina trade. That is just talk about generational. That's a generational trade. It's going to affect generations Easy. forever Easy. If, if, if it Caleb, pans out being. I had a tweet about it today. It was like I yeah. can't. I still can't believe that where we're at now all of this excitement this possibly the best quarterback to ever fall into our laps all yeah. started from a fourth down in like 28 <laughs> hail mary by the texans that should have got picked it ends up being a touchdown they go for two last second well not last it was like 30 seconds left and win the game you know what i mean the trickle down effect of that and what that's led to with us getting the first round trading it then to the Panthers. So we lucked on getting the first overall, right? We then lucked on the team we trade with. Ryan Pohl said it himself. He didn't expect him to be the <laughs> that bad, right? They end up being dog shit. We get the first again, and then not only do we get the first again, it is in the draft that has a quarterback that's has that's has as much hype as like Andrew Luck, Peyton Manning, those top prospects, right? And they all turned out pretty well. So I just, I, it's crazy thinking about because typically for a team that has never had a 4,000 yard passer, I, I think it's fair to say we have been on the unlucky side forever, at least on that side of the ball. The defensive side of the ball, we we draft a linebacker, they end up being amazing, right? So we do, we do get some hits on that end. But yeah, it's just crazy to think that, wow, it's finally our turn. It is finally our turn. And, and you know what? If it doesn't work out with Caleb, I can. I, I will totally understand. I will empathize with everyone and saying, you know what? It may just never happen because like, if, if you're talking about the football gods, they basically say, Hey, look, we've given you everything. Yeah. You possibly need." <laughs> I say that, but it's so funny, Ficky. Cause like, I would, I said with Justin, I said, man, if we fuck this one up, I'm not going to have faith ever again. And now I'm here once again. And, and like I said, it is a, it is, you know, obviously the circumstances, how we got here is just so unusual. And we shouldn't really, it should not be our pick. No, we, should we should not be not able be. to have a chance at Caleb Williams. But now here we are once again, where I'm like, if we somehow mess this up, if, if Chicago messes up this quarterback, man. Yeah. I don't know. We'll be back. We'll be back. We'll talk I know about that. Well, hopefully we won't talk about it, but hopefully, um, let's go bro, ahead and, know. um, Vicky, if you don't mind, before we end the show, let's go ahead and, uh, our OGs, our new faces, yep, uh, new you. face gangs. Let's go and go through those. And then. And then let's go ahead and finish up with uh, – we'll go through the questions pretty quickly uh, that our, our viewers have here. Absolutely. Jack, if you mind throwing them up on here. Thank you, sir. Jerome on YouTube with the hashtag OG. Thank you, Jerome. Then we got my mom on here with Johnny? the hashtag OG. Yes, Johnny. She she does hey, watch dude, every show. So she's killing it with that YouTube picture. I know. Look at that. So professional, Damn. my mom. Is she my a teacher? Over there. She, she was. She's retired now. Hey, yeah, yeah, do I know teacher. a teacher photo or what? Yeah. I'm like, that, that shit <laughs> – that looks like, you know, in your yearbook, you like your teachers at the yep, top right exactly corner. exactly what it is. Left corner, Absolutely. whatever it is. But that's funny. It's funny dude. Shout out to my mama. 
Uh, and then Giovanni Garcia on ha- on YouTube with hashtag new face. Seen a couple streams on Twitter and just subscribed to YouTube. Really appreciate that. Y'all have been following a lot on Twitter as well, which is which is great. We're everywhere. So appreciate the love in any shape or form, any platform. Any platform. Uh, and, yeah, any platform. And I think that's it. So appreciate it. Thank cool. you, Jack. Cool. And then, Jack, if you don't mind just bringing up those questions, and we'll go ahead and close the show. Um, and, of course, we'll pick a winner for, for Kyle Long. Absolutely. So we got uh, Vizzo Joe, who's definitely OG on here, with a great question. Did you guys catch Flu saying multiple times that an inside pass rusher could be an option? Mm-hmm. Who's a three-tech y'all like in the draft? I did see that. Who I actually think we could get, even at – I've seen him mock to us a couple times, who is a dog. I would say Brian Murphy the second from Texas. So – I wouldn't be – if they go defensive tackle, I won't be that mad. Mm-hmm. It'd be a little bit interesting if a wide receiver still there, like a Rome or a Malik. I, you know, but I'm still going to trust Poles. But what did Flew say when he first got here? He said the engine to this defense is the three-tech. Like, he's been saying it over and over and over how important a three-tech is. So if they finally decide to go get that guy, the best one on the board at number nine – or maybe they trade back, right? That could be an easy possibility. Trade back, get your starter. I'm not going to be mad about that. Yeah. I uh, Donald, you said Byron 13, Murphy. So. Is that what you yeah, said? Yeah, Byron Murphy the second. Yeah, I think and then from got, Texas. Yeah, and then, first of all, I agree. I did see, I think there was Newton, Newton out of Illinois. I think those yep, are the only two that you could potentially, those are the only two you can't, after that, I think it's a drop off. Yeah, like yeah. as far no, as those Newton two. Be cool. So I think those two are, are interesting. However, I would I would be against it, man. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't be pissed off. It's like for me, I'm I'm dead set go go offense this time around. You know, Once if it's even if it's in the trenches, man. Even if it's a tackle, protect. What if they're gone? Like I'm Ooh. saying, like realistically, there could be a case. All has been as projected as high mm-hmm. as five. Right? So say like the quarterbacks, all four, like all four don't go. All four don't go, right? Vikings uh-huh. don't trade up for JJ, which seems like everyone's saying, right? So all yeah. four don't go. I like Marvin's that. obviously cool. Marvin's obviously off. Joe Alt would be then the next non-person. I think it. I think it's going to go Marvin, then Joe, and then it's going to be Malik and Rome, right? Or mm-hmm. any of that mix, right? They could easily well, I mean, all be gone at nine. Then what? there was a mock draft here from ESPN that had Marvin Harrison Jr. falling to nine to the Bears. Bro, that's that it. <laughs> That but is, again, the draft, wow. you have no idea what's going to happen. Don't. So for you me, I, I, I wouldn't be upset with it. I wouldn't like it. Um, or I wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be electric. I guess it wouldn't be flat. Yeah. It wouldn't right? be as exciting for sure. But yeah. if they're all gone and you trade back or but if I, it's like they can't get them, I'm not mad. About I it. did catch that. I think it was maybe on Hogan Johns, which is awesome bears podcast. I think it was today. Um, I was watching clips of, it. I haven't finished it, but blues did talk about it. Cause they talked about, I think prospects where they could go edge. They're actually talking about edge rushers on the outside. Right. And he was like, he made it a point. He was like, or inside, you know, he's uh, obviously, I bet if anyone had to choose, you know, which side of the he's ball to go on, is like, get me another it's, defensive player. Like I need to, honestly, it could be like the missing piece. Like if you get another edge or, you know, well, he's, inside like or I out. Said, he said Sheesh. that the, the machine of this defense is the inside tech. Now, Javon Dexter, definitely inside tech, uh, the three tech. The Javon Dexter definitely had a, uh, a better back half of the year. But you're telling me if you don't get the you have the opportunity to get the best defensive tackle in the draft that you don't take that chance and opportunity. Oh, Flus is probably foaming at the mouth to make that. He'd run up to the podium himself to to give the card to the uh to the uh commissioner. So yeah, I could yeah. ease I think I think it's fair to say that the main positions that we could go for wide receiver, right? And I'm recruiting Brock in there, right? Basically He's offensive receiver. weapon. Yeah, wide receiver, mm-hmm. and then either side of the trenches. Joe all or of edge and interior linebacker. No secondary. No running backs. No quarterback. We're already taking them. So mm-hmm. that's kind of our options there. Yeah. Uh, next one, Jack. Oh, it's a good one. Giovanni Garcia on YouTube said who ends up with more yards, Keenan or DJ. I'll start DJ. He's going to get yak. Yeah. Speaking I agree. Of, we'll bring it back to the beginning of the show about the hip drop, hip drop tackle. Hip, it's right? hard to say. Hip drop tackle. Yeah, I'm making sure. Some of that, I feel like I say it too fast to say it backwards. I just feel like that right there, Yak Merchant, DJ Moore. <laughs> it's yeah, going to go crazy. Need, dude. I, he's he's big, bigger playability. Like Keenan Allen's yeah. game and why he's going to be so great for Caleb is he finds the soft zones in the intermediate yeah. and mid game. He like he basically just finds where so he's going to stay and get open. Are you going go Keenan DJ. or DJ? No, no, I'm going to go DJ because he has more big playability. But it could very well. But it could very well be Keenan. It could. How cool is that? 
Look, if they both, we have not seen two 1,000 yard receivers on the same team, and that's also very hard did, to do. But like, did Alshon and Marsh get, I don't get there? They may have one year. I thought they, they did. May have. I thought they did. They probably maybe did. Alshon's rookie or sophomore. Rookie, year. rookie or second year. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. yeah. Marshall was gone after the second year, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So, but yeah, Good yeah. But we haven't seen this since then. But yeah, that's a great question. Next one, Jack. Kevin Vale on, uh, on Twitter. So what are your expectations for the Bears now knowing that Williams is starting the season? Hmm. Expectations. For me, so there's, there's two different expectations, right? Expectations of the team and expectations of Caleb. Expectations for Caleb is you walk away from the season and say, yeah, that's our guy. We have not done that after drafting a quarterback ever. Mm-hmm. We've never after the rookie year been like, yep, that's the future. Right. And a lot of times, even if they don't have the best year, right. A lot of times you can be like, oh, that we can tell that this is going to be the guy. Right. So that'd be the expectation for Caleb for the bears. I, I, this is a high expectation, but I would think it's playoffs, right? You, you need to get to playoffs. And if you don't, you just miss it. Like maybe you get nine wins, 10 wins, but due to who you lost to win loss record versus similar opponents, you don't make it in. Right. But like you need to be right there. Like you should be in the hunt graphic at least till week 17. I don't care. Like one game out. I think that's the expectations on that. But what about you? What's your expectations for the for the Bears? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to put expectations on Williams too high, but I mean MVP or bust, in my yeah, opinion. Um, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. No, honest to God, I think you I think you said it right. And, and don't clip that, but I think. You're right. Being in the hunt would be good enough. Would be okay. I would be okay with that. Obviously, Kyle said it as well about just if, if he's the guy, if he shows he's the guy. We talk about with Fields all the time. But if he shows, oh, Caleb is the, he's the guy. He's he is our quarterback. He's a franchise quarterback. We understand why the hype, everything, and he lives up to that. And sure, maybe you don't win as many games. I, I'm I'm that's a great outcome for me. However, I just don't think that's possible with the roster they have, both on offense and defense. Like if he's the guy, it's like, oh. Playoffs, playoffs, maybe make some noise there too. For me though, I, I'm going to stay it right here. Playoffs for me. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to, I've been, I'm going to maintain it. Keep it, keep the same thing, the same thing here. I think playoffs and it doesn't have to be wild card. It doesn't have to be winning the division. It doesn't have to be number one seed. Just get in, get in and have some fun. Look at the Texans, CJ Stroud, what they did last year. And I believe the bears are better suited, a better, yes. you know, better ready to make a, them. Ready? Yeah, I mean, they to- this doing. It's not like year one, man. No, it's year three. Ryan Poles talked about it. Now it's time to really go out and 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 do something. And it's all up. It's all really on Caleb Williams and his shoulders, and also the coaching staff, yeah. Shane Waldron, and and those guys to really help out a rookie quarterback and see how fast he can kind of grow and get into um, or and develop into hopefully a franchise guy. Yeah, we should. That's a great comment here. Giovanni said, I think 10 wins is attainable. I agree. Like, unless major injuries, which can happen, hopefully not, right? Unless, like, major injuries happen across the board, you know, because there's some years where it's just like a team just gets the, the injury bug. Hopefully that's not us. But, yes, if you look at this roster from top to bottom, even with the rookie quarterback, it is definitely playoff ready, right? They may get bounced the first round, but they should be able to make it into the playoffs. All right, Jack, you made it so good, so quick. Uh, YouTube, Hendrix, or Hendrix on YouTube. I don't know why I said it like that. But anyways, do the Bears get hard knocks now that they got Caleb Williams? Do they play Detroit on Thanksgiving now now that they got Caleb Williams? So I don't think we can answer either of these because we don't know. Um, I know that <laughs> the McCaskies don't want hard knocks in Chicago still. McCaskey literally said it today. He said, there's other teams that are interested, and we would like it to keep, we would like to keep it that way. So they do not want it there. Uh, who I think Cole Komet was asked on CSGO last week. And he said, they asked him like, do you want hard knocks? Like, would you prefer it? And he says, no. So, so the players don't want it. I'm sure Ryan Poles and the coaching staff don't want it. The McCaskies don't want it. So if we don't get it, I'm not going to be upset because they can focus on what they need to do and make the playoffs. But if we do get it as a fan, hell fucking yeah, I'm in there. I'm watching all that. I'm digesting all that great content for us. We can talk about it. But I, I don't think that that decision won't be made till uh, a little bit later. And then with Thanksgiving, I don't think I don't know. We got to wait for the schedule release. It could. We don't know. Like it is, that's just speculation. Oh, also, did you see Dave that um, 
what they're doing now for Hard Knocks, the in-season version? Yeah, the division. Yeah, yeah that's, that's why I think the Bears are very likely to to get it, man. I think it's it, – it, or not – I guess that they can't get both, right? No. They wouldn't be able to get, get both. Yeah. That's that, that's why I think it's possible that maybe they go with a different team other than the Bears to start Hard Knocks, and then they go into the midseason where they go through the NFC North where it could be – that could be one of the best, one of the most interesting d- d- yeah, division teams. Ever. Or not ever, but this year in 2024 because you have – I mean – Caleb Williams, a rookie quarterback. That what you know, we understand what the Bears got going. You got Detroit Lions, Jared Goff running it back, trying to, you know, maintain that success. You got the Packers, Jordan Love, they did it a fucking again. That type of shit. Then you got maybe a wild card in the Vikings that move up and draft a quarterback, likely JJ McCarthy or something like that. Crazy. It would be such a fun as far as storylines go. Hell yeah. And it's probably gonna be a very competitive division. That would be that would be electric. However, me personally, I want the Bears to have all the shine. I know the players don't like it. Give me hard knocks, June, July, early. Fo- that's we get early. Basically, the football season starts earlier for us because we're getting hard knocks, dude. Let's be honest. As, as content creators, this is one hundred percent. We need this. Yeah, we're throwing on HBO on Sunday nights. We're reacting to every episode. I mean, even Hell if you don't yeah. have a podcast or you don't, you know, if you just talk Bears to your friends, you know, at the cooler, you know, fridge, whatever it is. Hard knocks would be electric, man. I understand it's evasive. I understand the players hate it. But it is Do me a solid here. We deserve it. We went through some fucking terrible seasons. If you have to have a few cameras and it's do me a solid, please. No, that's funny. Do me a solid. Like, let me have let me have some entertainment. Bears fans deserve this shit. We we deserve something. Like, you know, if we don't do if we don't get hard knocks, then give me playoffs. Like, and then if you give me hard knocks, I also need if we're not if we don't get hard knocks, if the Bears do not get hard knocks this year, I don't think we'll ever get it. No, and Come I, on. man, I, ah, yeah, this might, the it's NFL is probably going to be like, yo, we, we have to, this is the only opportunity. And I guarantee it. Enough. I mean, old man, George up there. I mean, doesn't let players wear zero. He's probably banging hard as hell right now. Send an email every fucking morning. No, to Rodney not Goodell saying, it, Do not give me this shit. Do not put, we have a rookie quarterback. We do not need more eyes. You know, I can imagine please, him Roger. sending emails too. We like, Weekly or weekly. daily. Maybe. It probably isn't a daily, but I guarantee you, weekly is very, very likely. Where it's like he's here. having someone send in a, an email like, hey, just had another reason why we shouldn't have, have it to, here in Chicago. To be fair, though, like, I mean, uh, McCaskies, they do a poll. I mean, they're they're a foundational franchise. So That's like, why I'm serious. It's it's a little bit like, mm. <laughs> like, yo, don't don't show up on my – get off my yeah. yard. It's basically, old man, get off my lawn is what he's, what he's doing right yeah. now. So – uh jack do we have any more questions if no it's all good all right bet bet that's all that we have any other final thoughts dave any questions you had anything to come up hopefully no breaking news happened because that seems to happen nothing as soon as that the, as, soon as we end the pod no breaking news right now um before we go ahead and uh, announce the winner for kyle long again just go ahead and make sure to sub to the bfr podcast um, Apple Spotify listeners, if you're over there, um, you know, review the pod over there, jump over to YouTube, hit, give us a like there as well. Subscribe if you can. Uh, the sport's been crazy. We're so close to 4,000 subs. Um, we're there. excited. A lot of great plans. We have a lot of, a couple few, or actually quite a few announcements coming on draft day, um, April 20, I don't know the date, 25th. A lot of cool stuff coming to the BFR community. Um, we're excited again. Um, you can follow me on all socials at Dave underscore BFR. I cover the Chicago Bears for sportsmockery.com. Uh, check out all Chicago sports news over there. Um, we wouldn't be able to do this pod without them. And of course, you can follow uh, Ficky. All socials, it's Ficky, baby. Every graphic you see, Ficky's probably touched it and made it. Uh, he's been killing it. Um, check out the BFR pod on all socials as well. I think it's BFR underscore pod on everything. Right. TikTok, Instagram's going crazy. Like usual, you guys have been showing love. Showing um, and then. Love. And then shout out to, yeah, hit MC Fact right here with the fact. Hit the like button on your way out if you can. I know it's like, if you watch YouTube, if you not even just podcasts, if you just watch YouTube videos, whether it's video games, whatever it might be, you hear that like button, somehow it fucking does magic, dude. Just hit the like button. We really appreciate it. Uh, if you're excited about Caleb Williams, hit the like button. If you, if you missed Justin Fields, hit the like button. Um, anyways, <laughs> so I, anyways... Um, we appreciate it. Also, I, I want to say one more thing. Uh, shout out to Kyle Long. Um, first of all, just hopping on what 40 plus minutes talking ball with us. Such a cool dude. One of my favorite bears, you know, it's crazy, you know, being in middle school, high school, you know, watching him play, you know, with Cuddy and all these days. And now we're, now he's able to just, you know, give back to the bears fans community and just, and talk with everybody. I mean, he just, he goes on everything for the most part. 
Uh, but it's just really cool that he takes time and talks so long with us. Um, it doesn't go unnoticed. Shout out to him and his family. I know he's got two under two or something like that. So I mean, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Pray for him. I know his house. I know his household's crazy yeah. right now. So. <laughs> he's killing it though. He's killing it. He's a, he's a podcaster. You know, he's one of us. Um, and we appreciate it. Follow his um podcast. Him and his brother, the Green Light Pod. It is in the YouTube description, of course. Uh, and you know where to follow Kyle along. Just search Google. You'll you'll see all his socials over there. So, Vicky, I don't think I'm missing anything, man. Um, what are we gonna? Do you want to announce the winners now, or do you want to do it when we're gonna do that? Because well, I, 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 I don't. Well, I, do? I I I actually kind of just was scrolling because there was a bunch of comments and everything, and I, and you have to be subscribed. So I did I did find one, one here. Okay, that's only found that can, looks like subscribed and everything like that. Let's do um, it. So do right it. here, you know, drum roll, please, Jack. Can you get that in? No. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> the winner of the Kyle Long signed jersey is going to be. Uh, it looks like weekday tacos twenty two on what a name. Twitter. It weekday tacos oh no as soon as they announced the winner dave just disappeared what was that weekday tacos 22 yo that is uh that's crazy jack i'm bringing you in just to to fill that oh he's back he's back oh sorry i hit the oh, back face i hit the I back did that last, on my i did that yes, last time. i know and i said i laughed at you when you did it too i was like what an idiot you know like who's doing that <laughs> i'm over here being an idiot myself man um did I, did I, where did you leave off? No, you, you announced, announced it. It was like, as soon as you announced it, weekday tacos 22. And then you said, I'm out. Peace. So yes, weekday tacos. I'm going to try and find it myself here. So weekdays tacos or weekday tacos 22. You're the winner. I'm going to go ahead and tweet it. I'm going to tweet at you because underneath the comment, he commented underneath Kyle Long. So that should even make it easier. I'm going to comment. Shoot me a DM. If you're watching this live, hit, shoot me a DM. I'm going to get your uh, stuff over to Kyle and he's going to get you over that uh, new Jersey. Uh, and again, if you guys like um, we do our own Jersey giveaways and everything like yep. that, and of course with Kayla Williams coming to town, there's going to be a lot of giveaways. So uh, yeah, go ahead sure and show some love, S you know, stay uh, in touch with the community, uh, but weekday tacos 22 on Twitter. Congratulations. Uh, I mean, I would be so it's stoked Jake. right now if I was getting signed. Uh, yeah, I was Jersey. I know it's funny, but I was like, can I sign up? Like, hell yeah, I want to I, sign up. I, I ain't going to lie. When I first, you know, did the little random giveaway, it did land on me, and I said, all right, I, I ain't going like, to do it. I'm followed to both. I'm followed to all the platforms. So Yeah. No, again, no shout out chance. to Weekday Tacos. Shout out to Kyle Long uh, for doing that. Um, also, I want to give some love here to a comment here uh, by T Gritty Gone. Uh, our guy, great. friend of the show, the Windy City Productions, has a great 20-minute highlight video of Caleb balling in structure, not out of structure, in structure, and it's awesome. First of Caleb all, QB1 it. retweeted it yeah, and liked fun. it. Yeah. And also, shout out to uh, you know Rashab over there. I don't know, I don't know how he did it, but he did it. Uh, awesome, awesome wow, video. I think it's on his YouTube as well. So if yeah. you're a Bears content, if you consume Bears content, you know where to find him. The Windy City Productions, both on Twitter and YouTube. Um, but I think that is that. I think that about wraps it. What up for us, right? 50? Yeah. After a minute forty-two, yeah, I would. I would think so. <laughs> not a minute forty-two, hour forty-two. We wish we had a show that short. <laughs> not even, not even possible. Yeah. But what a good one hundred and two minutes. It's awesome. Though. I mean, it, it, it's crazy. I, I just like all of you are probably ready. You know, waiting for this our weekly episodes. I'm, I'm the same way. With so much news dropping, I'm like, when are we going live? I've, I can't wait to talk about all this stuff that's going on. I'm just glad that like this off season has been an exciting one. It's not like, I don't know, boring. Like imagine you're the Chargers, where it's just like, oh, we cut everyone. Like you, Matt, how do you make how do you make enjoyable content? I mean, you can, but it's like we started a podcast at a pretty good time. I, I, sure, it's been. You know, it was a pretty bad year. What yeah, when we year won was, three games, and then we last yeah. year was kind of. Eh. But right now, I'm hoping we are as far as podcasting. This is the time to jump in. So if you are a listener, I'm getting off topic here. But if you want to make a Bears podcast, do it now. Yeah. I'll come on. Vicky will come on. I'll speak for him. We got Jack. Jack, I know Jack wants to come on your podcast. Um, but yeah, seriously, if you're gonna do it, what a time! What We're time? excited. It's gonna be so much fun. Uh, again, shout out to the support. Uh, from everyone and the community that we're building. Shout out to Jack, our producer. Yep. Shout out to Ryan, our uh, graphics guy. And of course, Vicky as well, who, I mean, you're kind of like a graphics guy too now. I am a now wizard over point. here. Yeah, just seriously. Jesus Christ. Whipping it out, dog. <laughs> um, <laughs> wait. 
Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> what a what a what a line there. Someone clip that. Oh wait, I will. No. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Anyways, we appreciate the love. Uh, we'll be back next week as always to have a another episode. Um, uh, but shout out to you guys and uh, bear down. Peace.